<laughs> right. right, okay, we now have the Peter, the New Zealand Association of Rationalists and Humanists. Peter, is that, you're there, welcome. I am indeed. Um, yes, yeah, thank you for allowing me to uh, speak to you all about this uh, very important issue. Um, yes, I'll leave it up to you. Right. Okay, so our submission uh, was around the, the aspect of religious instruction in schools. Um, so the existing law does not require any kind of informed consent from parents. And this has had a significant impact on, on children. I, I'm not going to relitigate the, the harms. I think we've had previous um, submissions, uh, specifically by David Hines, and we've actually presented many times before about the harms of religious instruction in school. Um, we, the, the, the essential message is that we strongly support a decision to um, review this policy within schools um, and to try and modify it so that it addresses the human rights issues around that. Um, we, we strongly support a, uh, a move to an opt-in system where um, deliberate uh, informed consent is achieved or is requested from parents before children are uh, included in their uh, in religious instruction uh, classes. Um, but we also question whether uh, having religious instruction classes or religious indoctrination within a school setting is really appropriate within a school, secular school system. So although we think that it would be an improvement to have an opt-in approach, um, we, we, we still continue to question whether that's really appropriate within a, uh, a secular education system. However, um, that isn't what's before us in terms of this bill. Um, so, you know, the existing bill is talking about introducing an opt-in system. Um, however, even if we do that, I think there's some, some issues that we, we, we need to look at. Um, the first is accurate information to parents. So if we're talking about informed consent, um, it's, it's, it's no use just saying that we, we need to uh, seek consent from parents, but we need to actually provide some, you know, some kind of insurance that the parents actually receive accurate information about what these classes are. The, the problem is in the past, the, the classes have been framed as a values classes. And unfortunately, uh, the, the New Zealand curriculum already includes a, a, a secular value system where we, we include all children. So to suggest that there's a value program, but it can only occur within the context of a Christian, um, as, as is 99% of the case, a Christian uh, context, is essentially saying that, that people outside of that moral system, or outside of that religion, um, don't have values. Um, and you know, uh, I think generally that people would agree that that's that's not true, um, but th this is a perspective that uh, that is pushed in these kinds of programs that um, that values are being taught by a religious instruction program. Um, what we would like to see is that there is additional. Uh, if, if we're going to go ahead with an opt-in system, that we, we introduce additional language which ensures that the information provided to parents is accurate about those particular programs and isn't misrepresented as, as value studies. Another, another issue is that there is no real oversight of religious instruction at the moment. So what happens is because it's outside the purvey or the, 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 the school is officially closed when these, these programs happen, then it sort of slips between the cracks. So what happens is that the uh, the Education Review Office, the Ministry of Education, the Human Rights um, Commission, none of these none of these government bodies are actually taking responsibility for ensuring compliance with the law, even the existing law. So at at the moment there's 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 no real review to make sure that foot schools are following um, following the law and the only recourse is for parents to try and take that to the Human Rights Commission. The problem with that is that there's no um, there's no compliance uh, ability for the Human Rights Commission to uh, ensure compliance um, and impose that on the schools. And in fact, you know, we've ended up there's now a uh, there's now uh, legal action being taken in the High Court to try, as a last ditch effort, to 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 try and make to to bring these issues um, and have them litigated. Um, you know, the, the fact that we've had to get to the High Court in order to be able to just do a human rights, um, you know, ensure that children are, are properly treated within our schools and, and not discriminated against, I don't think is a, um, is, 
very laudable for, for the government, to be honest. So I, I would like to see um, a situation where if, if this legislation goes ahead, that we add la language which will place responsibility on a government agency to ensure the, the, um, that the law is followed um, and that they monitor the, um, the conduct of religious instruction in schools. Um, a related issue is the collection of public data. Um, at the moment, um, our organisation, the Rationalists, have been involved in collecting public data on the, uh, the practice of religious instruction in schools. Um, other organisations have also conducted that, uh, that, that kind of uh, research um, to, to get some idea about um, what, what it looks like in New Zealand. Um, but there's no public, there's no, sorry, government collection of data. Um, so uh, again, the Ministry of Education, the Human Rights Commission, uh, the Education Review Office, none of these organisations are tasked with actually collecting data about religious instruction in school, whether that uh, religious instruction is having adverse effects on students, um, whether um, there are violations occurring, as I was saying before. So we really need to have some kind of body which is responsible for collecting data on religious instruction to ensure um, that it's being conducted and it's not harming students. As I was saying, um, we, we kind of have a problem with the human rights process in general, and I think the previous submission might have actually been talking about this as well, in terms of um, the, there isn't a easy lead, there isn't much of a path for people having uh, human rights issues um, to, to, to actually have a binding conclusion. Um, so in other words, they can go to the Human Rights Commission, the Human Rights Commission can maybe have a meeting with the person they're making the complaint about, they can have a bit of a chat, but if the person they're making a complaint about doesn't cooperate or isn't interested in making a change, um, there really isn't a path forward. The, 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 the current system means that you're looking for years before there's any kind of, uh, any kind of resolution. And of course, in the case of you know, children at school, um, you know, four years is basically means that it's you know, done and dusted in terms of you know, the, you know, whatever happened is now irrelevant. You know, they're out, you know, if it's a primary school, for example, they've probably you know, uh, progressed almost to secondary school at that point. So um, this isn't just a problem with religious instruction, it's also um, a problem with disabilities. There's many human rights issues which, which are occurring, but because we've got a kind of a broken human rights process, it means that we, um, it, it means that we don't really have a way forward to be able to address those concerns. Um, so I think um, we would like to see um, I, either the human rights tribunal and uh, commission um, given more teeth, as it were, to, to be able to deal with these complaints and actually have some kind of enforcement of compliance capability in law. Um, in conclusion, um, we strongly support legislation, legisla legislative change in order to be able to address these human rights violations and to ensure that all children are welcome and safe at school. We don't want children to feel um, excluded or ostracized at school, especially not over their religion or their ethnic, um, ethnic background. And unfortunately, those two things are linked. So, you know, if you're talking about, you know, Muslims or um, Sikhs or Buddhists, um, it's, it's bad enough that they're coming from, you know, that, that they're sort of like identifiably different, but um, also if they're being singled out and excluded from classroom effectively because they're, they're a different religion, that's a pretty serious problem that we should address. Um, so I think ideally we, we, we should actually exclude um, religious instruction from school time and secular schools. Um, but if we are gonna have an opt-in system, we, we need to strengthen it so that schools actually comply um, with the law and don't, don't um, have adverse effects on the children. Thanks, Peter. That was very clear. I'll ask now if there are further questions. Mark, do you have a question? Uh, no, well, it's possibly slightly outside the scope, but do, do you think that maybe, you know, that it should be religious education rather than religious instruction so that you know, we're actually teaching, these are the principles of what various religions stand for, as opposed to... Uh, we broadly support religious, 
we, we broadly support religion. So what, by we, I'm actually talking, we've, we've had discussions internally in the Secular Education Network. And, and obviously there's also been broader community discussions. And it, although it's not universal, there, there is broad support for religious education in the sense that we, we should be learning in a social studies context about other religions. And I think at the appropriate time, and possibly not in primary school, because, you know, definitely not five-year-olds who haven't learned to read and write yet. Okay, so the thing is, the current religious instruction programs typically occur when a new entry and, you know, you know, five or six-year-olds who, who haven't really even learned to read and write yet. So that's not the appropriate time to be learning about complex, um, you know, social, uh, social issues. We should really be leaving that to a bit later, and I would suggest to secondary school, uh, more of in a social studies context. Um, and, and providing that even-handed thing, uh, ha even-handed approach by trained teachers. Um, so that's very, very dissimilar to the religious instruction where children, uh, you know, basically the school has stopped. It's happening with very, very young children um, who are very vulnerable to um, being uh, indoctrinated at that age um, and having people from religious organizations come through and having exclusive access to children um, and you know, where other religious, you know, other religions don't have that kind of access. So, yeah, no, we have no problem with proper religious uh, education done in a responsible and balanced way. Thank you. Thanks. Denise. Um, no questions, Madam Chair. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank, thanks, Peter. I actually thought that was very clear. And thank you very much for coming in these very odd circumstances this morning and, and presenting. No worries. Thank you for your time. Thank you.